Cartography is a science that has greatly interested astronomer, astronomers over centuries. Actually, cartography is the study of geographical and geological maps. It helps us to understand our place in the world and to think about the effects of geography in our daily lives. Throughout history, maps have been used to reflect the current events, manipulate commerce and politics, and even illustrate the religious beliefs. Over the years, cartography has expanded and continues to expand today. Cartography and mathematics are closely related fields. Indeed, cartography relies on mathematical principles to represent geographic information. For example, cartographers use geometric principles such as coordinate systems, angles, distances, and scale. Uh, they also use mathematical projections to represent a three-dimensional Earth on a two-dimensional map. Different types of projections use different formulas to preserve the shape, the size, and the distance of uh, geographic features on the map. Overall, the relationship between cartography and uh, mathematics is uh, essential to uh, creating accurate and effective maps that can be used for navigation, uh, planning, analysis, and communication of information. We are therefore wondering uh, that methods uh, were used to uh, accurately the map, uh, map the globe. We decided to look uh, at one of the first methods uh, found. We are going to tell you about the method of Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes lived during the Hellenistic period, a period that began after the death of Alexander the Great in 323 before Christ, and which ended with the Roman conquest of Egypt in uh, 30 before Christ. So before Eratosthenes, Greek scholars had already begun to uh, understand the shape and size of the earth. Uh, indeed, Pythagoras proposed that the earth was spherical around 500 before Christ, while some time later, Aristotle claimed that the earth was uh, round due to the shadow cast by the earth during a lunar eclipse. So it was this method that inspired Eratosthenes, which allowed him to calculate the circumference of the earth with a greater precision. So we will detail this for you a little bit after. Besides, Eratosthenes um, also made other important uh, contributions to the science and culture of his time. He worked on problems in astronomy, mathematics, poetry and music, and served as chief librarian of the Library of Alexandria, uh, which was an important center of research and, and learning in uh, Hellenistic. Eratosthenes was a Greek mathematician and was known as the father of the geography. To calculate the circumference of the Earth, he assumed that Alexandria, the city he was in, was 5,000 stadia directly north to the city of Saini. He also knew that Saini was on the Tropic of Cancer, on the Tropic of Cancer, at noon on the summer solstice. Uh, the sun is directly overhead, and this means that a vertical pole in Saini will not make a shadow. Eratosthenes measures therefore the shadow of a pole uh, in Saini. He determines the angle of the sun by finding the angle the shadow makes with the ground. The measure of the angle of the sun is 1 50th of a circle, and that's about 7.5 degrees. Eratosthenes also supposed that um, sun's rays come to Earth in parallel lines. lines. Because the Earth is curved, the sun hits Sione from straight above, and Alexandria at an angle. We use geometry to determine that 150s also represents the portion of Earth covered by 5,000 stadia. So we can say that the circumference of the Earth is 50 times the 5,000 stadia. That's 250,000 uh, stadia, which is about 
46,000 kilometers. But in fact, the real circumference of the Earth is 40,000 kilometers. So Eratosthenes' estimation is only 15% different. And that's remarkable for 2,250 years ago. Eratosthenes had noted that the city of Cyrene on the Tropic of Cancer was on about the same meridian as the city of Alexandria, a little further north. He also noticed that in Cyrene, no vertical shadows were cast at noon on the summer solstice. Indeed, when he leaned over a well, he could see the bottom perfectly illuminated by the sun's rays. The sun was directly overhead. Then he wondered if this was also true in Alexandria, so on June 21st, he planted a stick called the gnomon directly in the ground and waited to see if a shadow would be cast at noon. It turns out there was one. Otherwise, we know that the sun's rays are coming in at the same angle at the same time of the day. Therefore, if a stick in Alexandria is casting a shadow while the stick in Cyrene is not, it must mean that the Earth's surface is curved. But Eratosthenes probably already knew that. As Aristotle validated the idea of a spherical Earth, Eratosthenes could use his observations to estimate the circumference of the entire planet. To find the circumference of the Earth, Eratosthenes needed the following theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a second line, then the alternate internal angles they form are of the same measure. Indeed, when you have two parallel lines, if you have a straight line that cuts the two parallel lines, this second forms angles with these lines. And between the two parallel lines on both sides of the second line, the angles formed are the same. That's an important mathematical theorem to know to understand how Eratosthenes find the circumference of the Earth. Eratosthenes estimates that the Sun is far north to infinity so that these rays can be considered parallel. So at the moment when the Sun does not cast a shadow at the bottom of the well at Cyrene, but casts a shadow on the gnomon at Alexandria, the rays that happen on these two things are perfectly parallel. The ray that hits the vertical of the well points right towards the center of the Earth. Moreover, the ray that arrives on the gnomon is not directed at all towards the center of the Earth, but the gnomon is planted vertically on the ground, so it is pointing towards the center of the Earth. Then we are exactly in the case of two parallel lines, the rays of the sun and of a second line, the one which extends the gnomon towards the center of the Earth. So if we can measure the angle formed by the gnomon and its shadow, it's exactly the same angle as the angle formed by Cyrene and Alexandria in relation to the center of the Earth. By measuring the shadow of the gnomon, and as he knows the height of the gnomon, Eratosthenes can calculate the angle that the sun's rays make with the vertical through trigonometry. A new question then arises. This angle, how many times can it be copied to make a complete tour of the Earth? As it measured about 7.2 degrees, the answer is 50 times. Indeed, the tour of the Earth represents 360 degrees. And since the difference is 7.2 degrees between Alexandria and Sienne, that means the two cities are 7.2 degrees apart on the Earth's surface. 360 divided by 7.2 gives 50. So by copying 50 times the 7.2 degrees angles, we went around the Earth. Now it's time to determine the circumference of the Earth. We know that the distance between the two cities is 5,000 stadia at an angle of 7.2 degrees. We then use the value of 360 degrees to reveal a relationship of proportionality whose unknown is the value of the circumference of the Earth. Thus, Eratosthenes found that the circumference of the Earth is 250,000 stadia, which is about 40,000 kilometers. But we may then wonder how did Eratosthenes find the value of 5,000 stadia? To determine the distance between the two cities, Eratosthenes used the Bematist, whose job at the time was to measure big distances by counting the steps of his camel while he traveled the distance. 
Indeed, the camel is known to have a very regular step. So if we know the length of a camel step and count the steps of the camel, we can deduce the total distance. Thus, the distance between the two cities is about 5,000 stadia, a part which is about 800 kilometers, and he takes the distance and copies it 50 times to go around the Earth. In the mid of the 20th century, we began launching satellites into space that help us to determine the exact value of the circumference of the Earth, which is 40,030 kilometers. Thus, Eratosthenes arrived to a value of the circumference of the Earth really close to the value we have today, with just a stick, a camel, and his brain. Well, well done, done Eratosthenes! Eratosthenes' <laughs> theory of the Earth's circumference uh, contributed significantly to the development of geography and astronomy. Indeed, his estimate was remarkably accurate and he, he determined that the circumference of the Earth was about 39,375 km per kilometers, which is very close to the actual value of 40,075 km. However, Eratosthenes' calculation is based on a few suppositions. Firstly, he supposed that the Earth was a perfect sphere, which is not entirely accurate, uh, because the Earth is slightly flattened at the pole and uh, purges at, uh, at the equator due to its rotation. The second supposition is that the Sun's rays uh, striking the, uh, the Earth are indeed parallel to each other. Uh, this is equivalent to assuming that the sun is uh, located a uh, far enough away, um, which in this case is a very reasonable approximation. And the last hypothesis made by Eratosthenes is that Cyan and Alexandria are situated on the same meridian. Although the two cities are both situated on the course of the Nile, uh, they aren't directly uh, on the same median. Fortunately, Eratosthenes made another mistake to compensate it, uh, for the, uh, that compensated for this one. Um, in fact, by using the camel technique, uh, he slightly underestimated the distance between the two cities. Uh, indeed, some say the camel uh, used was uh, maybe a bit faster than the average camel. On the other hand, he used the Greek unit of measurement stadium, meaning the length of an athletic stadium. However, not all stadiums were built to the same length. In Greece, uh, a stadium was about 185 meters long, while in Egypt, the stadium was about 157.5 meters long. So we don't know what units uh, Eratosthenes used for his calculations. If he used the Greek measure, his calculation would have been wrong by about by about 16 persons. And if he used the Egyptian unit, his error would have been uh, less than 200, two, two persons of the actual circumference of the Earth, which is um, quite... Eratosthenes' work on the circumference of the Earth had a profound impact on the development of geography and cartography. Indeed, his measurements improved the, the accuracy of maps and navigation, and his methods of calculating the size of the Earth were used by many scientists and astro astronomers for centuries. His work also helped establish the idea that the Earth was a sphere, uh, which had important implications for astronomy and the, the understanding of the universe. Overall, Eratosthenes' legacy on the circumference of the Earth is a test this testament to the power of observation, calculation, and the scientific method. To conclude, uh, cartography is a science that deals with the creation and study of uh, maps uh, that help us uh, understand uh, our place on the world and the, the effects uh, of uh, geography on our daily lives. Eratosthenes, a Greek mathematician, was one of the first to calculate the circumference of the Earth. 
his estimate uh, of uh, the Earth's circumference was remarkably accurate, given the limited tools and uh, knowledge available at his time. It was a Stenner's theory, but uh, played an important role in the development of geography and astronomy, uh, but it has uh, some limitations, such as uh, uncertainty regarding the unit of uh, measurements uh, used by Eratosthenes. After Eratosthenes' theory of uh, the Earth's circumference, several other theories and ideas uh, have been advanced about, uh, about uh, the shape and the size of the Earth. For example, Hipparchus, who lived in the um, who lived in the second century before Christ, uh, discovered that the orbit uh, of the Earth was not quite a circle, centered on the Sun. He also studied the movement of the Sun, the Moon and planets. And finally, it's amazing to note uh, that when Christopher Columbus, who also believed that uh, the Earth was uh, round, sailed west uh, from Iraq to India, uh, he believed that uh, the circumference of the Earth was significantly less than uh, the distance uh, calculated by uh, Eratosthenes and uh, that his uh, journey uh, would be uh, quite short. Uh, this error of appreciation uh, of the measurement of the Earth allowed uh, Christopher Columbus to convince uh, the Spanish sovereigns uh, to finance his trip. Uh, perhaps without, uh, this, uh, without uh, this error, uh, he couldn't uh, have made this trip and uh, the discovery of America uh, would have been delayed.